Welcome back to our higher level IB Chemistry video series. This is the first and final video in IB Chemistry Topic 21, Measurements and Data Processing, where we will be looking at TMS, High Resolution NMR, X-ray Crystallography and Multispectra Analysis. Before starting, it is vital you have completed our IB Chemistry Topic 11 video series, introducing the three main imaging modalities at IB Chemistry higher level, you need to appreciate the standard to which all molecules imaged with NMR are compared. Just like the standard hydrogen electrode in electrolysis, a standard is used in NMR to allow comparison of chemical shift values accurately. The standard used is tetramethylsilane, TMS, which consists of four methyl groups surrounding a silicon atom. It therefore contains one hydrogen environment containing 12 protons. TMS is visualized as a single peak on the right side of the spectrum and is used as the standard for three reasons. It is non-toxic and inert, it gives a resonance signal far away from test organic compounds, and 12 protons in the same environment gives a clear intense signal easily identified. However, the higher level syllabus extends beyond understanding TMS. As hinted in the final video of our IB Chemistry Topic 11 video series covering low resolution NMR, you must interpret high resolution spectra. Let's discuss it. A high resolution NMR spectrum appears very similar to a low resolution spectrum. The only difference is that each peak splits into specific banding patterns which reflect the number of hydrogens in the adjacent hydrogen environment to the environment giving rise to the peak. In our standard level series, we use the following low resolution spectrum for propane and proban one Their high resolution spectra would be as follows. There are three main splitting patterns to learn. A doublet is when a peak splits into two equal heighted peaks. It indicates the proton environment adjacent to the one represented by the peak contains one hydrogen, i.e. is a CH group. A triplet is when a peak splits into three peaks of height ratio 1 to 2 to 1. It indicates the proton environment adjacent to the one represented by the peak contains two hydrogens, i.e. is a CH2 group. A quartet is when a peak splits into four peaks of height ratio 1 to 3 to 3 to 1. It indicates the proton environment adjacent to the one represented by the peak contains three hydrogens, i.e. is a CH3 group. You have likely spotted a common pattern. The number of split peaks is always one greater than the number of hydrogens in the adjacent environment. Whilst not a commonly tested concept, you should understand that splitting is formally defined by the three rules of spin-spin coupling. Protons on the same environment do not interact as they are chemically equivalent. Splitting generally only occurs with protons on adjacent atoms. And protons attached to a nitrogen or oxygen do not split or cause splitting of adjacent peaks, i.e. OH peaks will always appear as a single clear peak. Let's put this into context using our previous two spectra for propane and propan one -ol. For propane, we previously identified the rightmost peak as the CH3 environment and the left is the CH2, since they express a ratio of 3 to 1 when analysing the integration trace. We can see the CH3 peak has three split peaks, i.e. is a triplet, and so indicates its adjacent environment contains two protons. This fits, as each CH3 is adjacent to a CH2. Furthermore, the CH2 peak has four split peaks, i.e. is a quartet, and so indicates its adjacent environment contains three protons. This fits as it is adjacent to a CH3 in either direction. We can therefore extend our common pattern for a terminal ethyl group to now be a triplet around 1 and a quartet around 1.5 to 4, with a ratio of 3 to 1. For propan 1 ol, since they express a ratio of 2 to 1 to 2 to 3, we identified the rightmost peak as a CH3 environment, and the next is the CH2 adjacent to it, the next is the OH, and the leftmost is the CH2 adjacent to the OH. We can see the CH2 peak adjacent to the OH has three split peaks, I is a triplet, and so indicates its adjacent environment contains two protons. This fits as it is adjacent to another CH2. Furthermore, the OH peak is not split, i.e. is a singlet, and so indicates it represents a hydrogen bound to an oxygen or nitrogen. This fits. We can also see the other CH2 peak has four split peaks, i.e. is a quartet, and so indicates its adjacent environment contains three protons. This fits, as it is adjacent to the CH3. 
Finally, the CH3 peak has three split peaks, i.e. is a triplet, and so indicates its adjacent environment contains two protons. This fits, as it is adjacent to a CH2. You now have full knowledge of NMR spectra as required for your exam. Let's apply our skills with an example question. The spectrum below relates to organic compound X, an ester with four carbon atoms. It has the molecular formula C4H8O2. A. Draw and name the structural formula for the four possible esters of compound X. B. Using the high-resolution NMR spectrum provided, determine the structure of X. For A, we can use the skills introduced in our IB Chemistry Topic 10 video series to draw the four isomers as methyl propanoate, ethyl ethanoate, propyl methanoate, and 1-methyl ethyl ethanoate. For B, we must first identify the number of hydrogen environments in each structure. In methyl propanoate, there would be the CH3, CH2, CH3, i.e. 3. In ethyl ethanoate, there would be the CH3, CH2, CH3, i.e. 3. In propyl methanoate, there would be the CH3, CH2, CH2, CH, i.e. 4. And in 1-methyl ethyl ethanoate, there would be two identical CH3 groups, CH, CH, i.e. 3. Looking at our spectrum, there are three hydrogen environments, so we can exclude propyl methanoate. Looking at the integration trace, we have a ratio of 2 to 3 to 3. 1-methyl ethyl ethanoate does not fit this ratio. However, both remaining molecules do, so let's look at the splitting pattern. The leftmost peak of ratio 2 relating to the CH2 group has four split peaks, indicating it is adjacent to an environment containing three protons. However, this is the case in both. The middle peak of ratio 3 relating to a CH3 group has no split peaks, indicating it is adjacent to no protons. However, this too occurs in both. The rightmost peak of ratio 2 relating to the other CH3 group has three split peaks, indicating it is adjacent to two protons, i.e. the CH2 group. However, this too is the case in both. So how do we differentiate? Well, you could go to the data booklet and start comparing shift values. However, remember our trick. A group near a single oxygen will be shifted higher. We can see the leftmost CH2 peak is uncharacteristically high, as we expect a terminal ethyl group to have a peak at 1 and 1.5 to 4, but it is over 4. Therefore, this CH2 must be close to the oxygen atom. This occurs in ethyl ethanoate. Whilst the three main imaging modalities introduced thus far form the bulk of your understanding for this topic, the higher level syllabus includes one additional modality, X-ray crystallography. You've now reached the end of the preview for this IB Science video. If you want to check out the full video, head over to our website and select a membership plan today.